Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning and uh, greetings to you if you are in, the, in other parts of the world. We are, of course, logging in from India. This is a special show today. Uh, welcome to the quality series. Uh, those of you who attended these series earlier and uh, are returning, you know, thank you very much. Obviously, we honor and respect your time that you give to us. The effort in these, uh, this series on behalf of Kimpro Foundation is to make sure that we are able to showcase the work and views of uh, distinguished qualitists and uh, are able to at least ignite or reignite in some cases the uh, the flame of quality in some of you so that's the purpose uh, quick uh, overview the word qualitist was coined of course by dr james juran as many of you would know and uh, in india and indian region subcontinent we have uh, mr suresh Kula, who is founder of kimpro who has embodied and evangelized the word. And in the last year or so, we have taken it as a mission to make sure that we popularize the word and ensure that it reaches more and more people. Right? But uh, as we get there, I have a request for you. Those who are on YouTube or LinkedIn, uh, can you give me a shout out quickly around where you are logging in from? And if uh, you are looking forward to this session, what any questions that you may have that will also tell me that both YouTube and LinkedIn are working on this. So I can definitely see that uh, LinkedIn is working. There are about 20 people there. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if somebody is on YouTube, can you also give me a shout out? And of course, LinkedIn people drop in your questions. Yeah. So we will, of course, bring them in later in the show. Quickly, I will quickly introduce my guest for the day. We'll bring him in a little later after I bring in my co-host as well. But um, let me introduce uh, Sachin Garg. Sachin, as many of you would know Sachin, he's a very, very popular figure in the quality fraternity. Has, um, of course, last few years, because of his work and deep work with ASQ, uh, a lot of people in this area will know his commitment and dedication towards quality. Uh, but he has a lot more uh, you know, than ESQ. So just, just to get into that, more than 20 years of experience in quality and business excellence and related fields with companies and groups like Tata Group, Max India, HCL Technologies. And um, he's uh, the youngest ESQ fellow from India and is currently the regional director for Russia, Asia, India, Australia, and New Zealand region. So basically a large part of the ESQ world. He has been very active with quality and organizations like any um, National Accreditation Board for Certification Body, the Indian Merchants Chamber, Arbin Kuwait Trust, uh, of course, the ASQ, and, and many other organizations. Very, very active in um, promotion and dissemination of quality principles. So he received the Quality Council of India's Quality Champion Award, quality, um, earlier, and of course, is a qualitist level three. Uh, which is one of the reasons why he's here and uh, called World Quality Leadership Award in 2015. Yeah, as I said, you know, he's the ASQ Regional Director, many years in financial services, IT, private equity, and currently, of course, in more like real estate and has moved and expanded his horizons in, to include strategy and related topics as well. He is a certified Six Sigma Master Black Belt, project management professional, and a certified manager of quality and business excellence, apart from a uh, gold certified innovation and benchmarking. So we'll bring him in. Um, but let me first bring in Balaji Reddy, who uh, is my partner in crime in this. Uh, Namaste, Balaji. And uh, you know, quickly, I think I've started getting some, you know, Greetings from the LinkedIn family. Thank you very much, uh, Sivraman and uh, Biswajit. So that, of course, tells me two things, that you are excited about the program and that LinkedIn and the StreamYard connection is working today. Right. So, That's good. <laughs> yeah, always good, always good. Some always uh, good. <laughs> alternate way of checking or quality inspection in, in some ways. Balvi, any opening comments before we bring uh, the star and the guest of the show for the, uh, into the stream? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, uh, first of all, of course, uh, as usual, I, I, it's it's been a wonderful journey, right? I mean, this is our eighth show, and Anshuman. I mean, can you believe this? Uh, uh, when we started out, what did we think? And I think it, it's Two, doing. It, I mean, I hope I hope we are enjoying doing it, but I hope uh, 
the people are enjoying it, uh, you know, as much as we are enjoying bringing this to them. Uh, I want to make a point here. Just, uh, I think this was a, a week ago, or maybe ten days ago. Uh, Dr. Joseph DeFio, who is uh, the CEO of Duran Institute, uh, which is now known as, they have rebranded it. They call it Duran Global now, all right? And uh, they had a, they had a, a program, a webinar with Chartered Quality Institute. That is, uh, if you know, they're based, uh, I think the UK based or something. And they had this program and it was a two hour, uh, I think one and a half hours where he spoke about quality in today's world. And then he was taking a QA. and a and he used the word qualitist. I, I was amazed. I mean, and then I, you know, I quickly sent out a note. Yeah, I sent out a note to him that, you know, Mr. Suresh Tula has done this in India and we have a, an actual recognition, uh, you know, that we give, we recognize qualitists with, with a kind of a label pin and, and a certificate. But unfortunately, I didn't get, I think it was the end of the program. So I don't know whether they were taking those. It was like what we do, right? They were taking the questions as they were coming. So mine was down a long list. I think there were some 50, 60 questions. So I don't know whether they really, but uh, he said that I'll respond to each of these questions later. He hasn't yet got back to what I said, whether it has gone through or not. But I was very excited to see that. But so I, I think we're on the right track and, and uh, we're the only ones in the world recognizing qualitists. So I think we should no, give I'm... a shout out to Suresh Lula, sir, also wherever he is, he's uh, today enjoying his holiday somewhere. So Suresh, sir, if you see this uh, recording, sir, it's all, it's all you. <laughs> it's all yeah. And that brings us to the, that brings us to the guest of the day, Balaji. Uh, so I'll bring Sachin in and uh, Sachin, uh, uh, welcome to the show. And I want to quickly read out a short message that Mr. Lula left for you. He didn't want to miss this, but there is a very important family function, which he's out of town for. So, and uh, the internet connectivity wasn't the best when we tried. So I, uh, he has uh, left a message that, you know, he obviously cherishes the dear connection and time that you have invested in the field. And of course, his personal rapport with you, you have been a very uh you know diligent student of his and he's uh, <laughs> put on record that he cherishes that he dearly wanted to be on this show uh just to welcome you and let you know that you know he's very appreciative of the work that you keep doing and i think that is um, immense praise from him coming from him so uh, that itself is deserving of a full show balaji and i envy you we've never got these kind of compliments so we are waiting i know we are waiting <laughs> for that but um with that sachin over to you for any opening comments uh, that you may have and then balaji will uh, open with the first question that we have for you sure thank you anshuman uh, i hope uh, my voice is audible All good. so yeah. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me to the show. It is indeed uh, quite a privilege um, to be with both of you today. I'm not much of a speaker, um, and that's why I love hosting webinars. So for a change today, I'm on the other side of the table. I'm feeling humbled. I'm feeling challenged uh, because I don't know how to prepare for webinars as a speaker. Um, so I'll, I'll go as it goes. but. Uh, my sincere gratitude to both of you, as well as to Mr. Lulla. Uh, so kind of him uh, to leave this note and uh, mention his kind words. Um, I'll try my best to answer your questions today. Uh, this is uh, this is a great journey for all of us. Um, the word qualitist and the qualitist recognition. I also have a role uh, to play in the background. I work with Kimpro team um, briefly on uh, defining the qualities criteria and the qualities journey at the background. So I'm, ha I'm very happy um, uh, to be amongst one of the qualities and to be on your show. Um, just, just a brief mention that both of you are my role models. Uh, and I follow your work. Oh my God. <laughs> I follow your work. I still remember, uh, just taking time, but I still remember stopping Anshuman in a crowded place at uh, Kimbro convention and say, listen, I follow your work. So I wanted to meet you just like uh, somebody stopping a celebrity in the midst of uh, Oscar celebrations. 
and Anshuman stopped by, spoke to me for a minute or two, and that's how we met each other. Uh, so thank you very much. Look forward for a good interaction today. Our pleasure, Sachin. Um, and as you know, Balaji, you want to get on with the first question uh, so that we can use the time at the best. And to the audience, just a quick reminder, you can, of course, start putting in your questions when you want. But um, around half an hour into the show, we will start taking uh, questions. Balaji. Wow. I mean, yeah, I mean, I actually, uh, Sachin just left me speechless by saying role model. Come on, Sachin. I, mean, you, I remember uh, feeling so honored uh, sharing uh, the, I don't really remember this. I was sitting next to you. I just saw the old photographs of the Silver Jubilee of the Qualtech Awards in 2013. That's the first time I saw you. And we were judges together. We were sitting next to each other. And I'm saying, oh my God. And that time you were sporting a mustache, uh, Sachin, you know. <laughs> so you look quite different. But that was my first introduction. Yeah. And, and if you're saying role model, I don't know what to say. I mean, we were we were together, we were colleagues then, in a sense. But let's get on with it. So uh, here it is. Uh, I mean, always wanted to know, you know, did, I mean, because at that time, I think we spoke about what you were doing in the field of quality, but never asked you this then. Uh, but uh, did you, how did you get into quality? Did, did, did it happen, you know, by a happy accident or was it by design or, I mean, just, just how did it all start, your career in quality? Sure. Uh, uh, so my formal association with the term quality happened when I received an appreciation from one of my clients. And uh, amongst the various things he said, uh, obviously appreciating my work, he said that I follow the, you know, uh, I follow the 100% total quality and total customer satisfaction principle of Dr. Uh, Deming. And uh, he mentioned that Dr. Deming is or was a quality guru. And uh, I was quite curious to, you know, understand what did he mean by quality guru? Because I've never heard this term quality before. <laughs> I used to be quite passionate about uh, uh, customer service, uh, client account management, and believing in uh, total customer satisfaction. Uh, but I've never heard the term quality. So out of curiosity, I Googled and found uh, more about Dr. Deming and his principles. And from there on, one step led to another and I discovered the profession. Uh, okay. On a lighter side, since I was in the service environment, uh, I said, let me search for a, uh, I, let me search for a quality professional uh, in my own company, in my own firm. And I did find one. Uh, and to my surprise, I found that guy used to come at 10 a.m. in the morning and leave at 4 p.m. And most of the time he's coaching and telling others what to do. I said, wow, what a hell of a job. You can come late, you can leave early and you tell, you keep telling others what to do. I like to be in this. <laughs> uh, that was on a lighter side. And I applied for the first internal job post, job post which came and I moved into full-time quality. That's my journey, Balaji. Wow, that was nice. I think most of us, uh, you know, have something similar. You know, it's either Deming Duran. For me, it was the same. I think I'm very sure with Anshuman also, it must have been something similar because we were exposed to these names and then suddenly our lives change, you know, when you come across these larger than life figures. Right, great, great. Yeah, Anshuman, you can take it away. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, thanks, Sachin. I think uh, that's a very. Uh, and, and... Like I keep telling all audience uh, that, look, it is important for us to be intentional about our career, but not everything can be intentional because you land into something. What you do with that landing is more important than where you land. And and Sachin is yeah. a very uh, you know amazing example of uh, he may have landed at, you know, more or less accidentally into quality, uh, though you know, if, if everybody notices, you know, he got a. Uh, appreciation email and of course he, i'm sure he must have celebrated or enjoyed that but he followed that up with the learning why he was being appreciated so that is a very deep quality yeah. for a qualitist that asking why and uh, assessing the situation so thanks sachin for that uh, important lesson or re uh, rem reminding us of that lesson there's one question we always or, always get into and 
usually it is balaji's question but today i will pose to you uh, both of us might know the answer but i think the audience may not know uh, we all of course are you know uh, we we worship mr lula's uh, contribution and the guidance that he has given for all of us but you are the star of the show today so how did you come across and what was your initial interaction and what have you learned over the years through um, through the association in in brief of course you know so that you know the audience can get a idea about that interaction sure anshu and just to clarify your question is about my meeting with lulla and association right correct correct right um well it happened that uh, i came across the qualities uh, uh, the kimbro qualitech awards um you know in 2000 uh, early 2008 or 9 through one of my colleague um i think he or she happened to be uh, one of the uh, kimbro examiners during those days and my firm started applying for uh, kimbro qualitech prize um and i got a chance to be at the finals and uh, you know attend mr lulla's opening session at the kimbro qualitech award those of you who've been there you will know that mr lulla opens up the uh, day with um, a speech which is uh, roughly 20 30 minutes it used to be uh, during those years and i was just blown away uh, by his uh, first speech although i had heard about him uh, to several colleagues uh one of my mentors at max had worked with him extensively for 12 plus years uh but when i heard him first i would say it and i've told uh, this to him that i used to come back to kimpro qualitech awards only for those 30 minutes of opening speech uh those 30 minutes of his opening address brought so much of clarity in my mind about my own profession what i was doing how i can do better then i just followed his work more and more and then i got a chance to interact with him in kimbro uh, conventions uh, kimbro awards at uh, at imc rbn qa um, examiner training at imc meetings um and um, i have no hesitation in saying that perhaps he is uh, one person who's left the most amount of impact on on my career when it comes to when it comes to uh, uh, the term quality and uh, more importantly um, i think he's brought uh, a simple understanding in my mind about uh, what i need to do as a professional and that to me uh, while i do follow many others has been his unique uh, point is that he's been simple he's been impactful and many of us will notice that he speaks slowly uh and he speaks with a thought uh to me that is an art if we can if we can listen and respond uh even and try to match a pace uh and maintain a pace like he maintains um uh, uh will be quite skillful in our job so that's my brief association with mr lulla i uh, i've become uh, friends with him uh, over the years um and i try my best to be uh, in his uh, contact um and, and more about it uh, as uh, as we talk talk forward in this show so that's sure. that's about me knowing mr lulla maybe around uh, 2010 in person now that's very special and um, wow like balaji had said earlier i will steal his words you know your story is similar to our story you know we all met in some similar circumstance and then became a fan and wanted more of him so yeah uh, that way i think that ties us up together balaji over to you for the next question yeah i mean um, when you said that he that suresh lola sir speaks very deliberately you know i uh, when i heard him speak of course i heard him speak after uh, uh, you know our what of our prime ministers used to speak like well, mr atar bihari vajpayee very measured and taking his long pauses and choosing his words carefully but i think uh, uh, mr suresh lola has his own own charming style all right i mean that 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 was what i was reminded of when you spoke of just now uh coming to what i had in mind i mean when uh, anshuman was introducing you and know, i was just simply blown away by 
the fact that you mentioned the variety of uh, industries you've served in. So, I mean, that's one thing I want to ask you, you know, because people have this thing that is quality the same everywhere? It's only manufacturing. I mean, just as a side note, I always pick, you know, the service thing when I'm told and I'm asked by Quimpro, what would you like to judge, manufacturing or service? Now, all our lives we've been in manufacturing. So I love to see how they apply these concepts in service. But in your case, it's crazy. I mean, you've just gone across a huge wide gamut of industry. So would you like to share with us? I mean, is quality the same or what are the lessons that you learned when you kind of applied the concepts of quality to these industries, especially the so-called non-conventional quality stuff that we talk about? Sure, Balaji. Before I respond to your question, I like to provide information why I switched industries. Uh, okay. uh, so as most of you know that I am not an MBA nor an engineer. Uh, and I had great interest in uh, being part of sectors of importance. Um, and the only way I could have done is to switch sectors. Um, so from ITE as an IT to uh, BFSI to real estate to private equity real estate. And I'm sure more to come in the coming years. Um, I had deep interest to be part of sectors of importance. Uh, IT was at boom in 2000. And I, uh, I and I contributed to uh, a few organizations uh, in the first seven years of my career, then seven years in insurance, um, which turned out to be one of the most challenging period for the insurance sector. And then with real estate, once again, one of the most challenging periods starting 2015. Uh, so that's my background about, uh, uh, you know, being in different industries. The second uh, information I like to share is that my movement uh, was also largely because of the rules uh, which I got uh, amongst these industries. So from IT, which is more about operations delivery and operational excellence, uh, to BFSI, which is a large end-to-end -end firm uh, with product and services, to real estate, which is a physical uh, product, uh, to private equity real estate, um, and, and variety of roles uh, which I played uh, uh, over the thing, uh, over the time was the reason I moved over. Now, in my mind, while I am unable to differentiate between quality in different industries, they do have uh, their own nuances. So, for example, IT and ITES is more about operations delivery and delivery excellence uh, and managing processes. So, the tools, techniques, methods uh, which one will adapt in uh, that industry may be slightly different from the one which gets adapted in an uh, insurance organization. Uh, so in IT and ITS, while our focus was on things such as uh, COPC, uh, uh, Lean and Six Sigma, more particularly Six Sigma, to focus on you know uh, process variation, defect reduction, and COPC for being the world-class uh, service provider, when I shifted to uh, financial services, uh, a firm which has already underwent a similar kind of journey. The focus had shifted to uh, becoming a firm which is most admired uh, uh, and hence the focus on business excellence was there. Uh, so servicing and uh, fulfilling the needs of all stakeholder was there. So uh, the profession of business excellence uh, or my role in business excellence was quite uh, useful there. And then from there to real estate, um, I got a chance to move upstream and work uh, both in business excellence and strategy. Um, uh, so it had a different flavor, um, and I could, uh, you know, see the physical product work closely with uh, customers over there. Uh, so all I'm trying to say is that, in my mind, some things have remained common, which is customer centricity, keeping customers at the center of universe, and all the things which quality professionals talk. What has been different is selection of the tools, techniques, uh, the methods, and the discipline which uh, matters most to that uh, industry. And that, I think, uh, I've been quite resource resourceful in doing that because, uh, as we all know, one shoe does not fit all. Uh, some of my colleagues and uh, community uh, uh, leaders are guilty of uh, carrying one technique from one industry to another industry and just force-fitting it. 
uh, like from manufacturing, people which work in manufacturing brought their understanding of Six Sigma and almost force-fitted it uh, in services industries such as insurance and said everybody has to become a uh, Six Sigma professional. Well, it does have uh, a large application in uh, insurance domain, but that's really not the only method to improve quality. And uh, the emphasis on uh, Six Sigma was largely on what we call in Junan's uh, trilogy, quality control projects, which is something has gone bad and you're trying to restore the uh, performance rather than ra really quality improvement. So 99% of the Six Sigma project I saw in that industry was actually quality control project or problem solving projects. There were hardly a project which was quality improvement. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, my experience or uh, my learning has been uh, not apply, uh, you know, one shoe for all approach over the industries. Um, and during the period, uh, during this journey, I've had the privilege of learning new techniques, new methods, which are useful. So, for example, in real estate, project management is far more applicable than process management. Now, how many of us uh, can accept this fact because all of us are brought as process management professionals but the applicability of project management concepts are far more useful uh, in a real estate scenario uh, than uh, any other industry so that's my response Bali. i'm not sure whether i responded to your question completely but my apologies if i did not no you totally did Balaji, you seem to be frozen. All good with you? I hope it's not the impact of my response. <laughs> <laughs> I am certain it is not. Uh, maybe he has an internet issue and will come back. So no worries. Uh, we'll get on with the show. Uh, in these days of work from home and you know some of these issues are common. Uh, so uh, Sachin, I think while you were answering, I was quite keenly listening on the explanation or the the context you gave for switching industry i think i i not as much as you but i've also moved industries a little bit and i could relate to it because it is um, at the end of the day we are all diagnosticians if we don't diagnose well we can't provide the remedy properly so uh, that is that that's a very 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 important point you brought in that understand what is required and then uh, prescribe so thank you very much for that lesson uh, re-emphasizing that lesson balaji yes you are back uh, no worries uh, yeah yeah uh, sachin uh, uh, i i'm yeah, moving I, I, to the next question anyway oh, okay so okay. sure uh, yeah sachin with a long career in quality and a very rewarding one indeed uh, the one question that always comes in that if if somebody was to enter quality field today and there are some students or you know early career professionals i would say in the audience today if you were to give them any advice or even better if you were to give the advice give advice to 20 years junior such in um, what would you say apart from being even more handsome than you are today what would you give uh, <laughs> as advice to the 20 years younger Sachin or somebody who wants to get into quality today? Sure, Anshuman. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for bringing that question. In fact, quite a few. And the first one is that I view, I wish I had somebody to give me an advice. So my biggest advice to professionals entering this field is to find a mentor. I think a mentor's role is very, very important. Just like uh, I follow Anshuman's work, Mr. Lula's work, and many others. And I speak to them when I'm occasionally uh, confused. Uh, and, and they, you know, uh, uh, from their own experiences, bring clarity to me. A mentor's uh, role will be very, very useful uh, for a young professional. I know I'm not advising certifications. I'm not advising... Um, you know, uh, following quality discipline. I may have, may have disappointed many of you with my response. But I will say finding a mentor is to me is uh, one of the uh, biggest favor uh, you can do to yourself. The second one uh, is read, write books. There are quite a few books. Um, 
and, and you can be overwhelmed with information and knowledge in this field. And you may almost fall uh, prey to, you know, uh, every single knowledge which exists in this field. My suggestion will be to select what you read carefully. And uh, I mean, my own personal example, while you quite you see quite a few books in my bookshelf, uh, there are only a couple of books which have left the maximum impact in my own career. So ask your mentors uh, which books have left the maximum impact on their careers and uh, read those books. My third advice, if I may, is don't fall prey to the technical side of quality profession. And I did that. And to me, in the last eight to 10 years, that has been my biggest learning. At the end of the day, quality is about bringing effectiveness and efficiency in everything we do. It's about delivering total customer satisfaction. And as I mentioned that I entered the quality field by receiving an appreciation for my customer who mentioned total customer satisfaction. And I used to live and breathe by total customer satisfaction, but I never knew the term quality. And uh, over a period of time, I fell in love with belts, the green belts, the black belts, the master black belts, and many other uh, products which are being sold in the marketplace. And sometime uh, or over a period of time, I realized that I'm going away from the very essence I joined this profession, which is customers. Uh, so my, my suggestion is to remain as close as possible to your customers and don't get overwhelmed by quality and the knowledge which is scattered around this uh, profession. So that's my two bit. No, it's a uh, very, very valuable um, input, sir, Sachin. And I, I, you know, all of us agree that you know there is enough to drown in the world of quality if we are not careful about what we are picking, right? So, if if one has picked the area of service quality or you know people impact quality and and other things, then getting deeper into that area makes sense. If one has picked a technical quality or or as you said, you brought up Six Sigma and other things and some people may want to get into that but then that choice should be intentional and careful and then you go deeper into it so that's i think a couple of days ago i was speaking at a webinar where i brought up this topic of mile wide inch deep and inch wide mile deep right so it's a choice we have and a common i would say midpoint is a, a t model where you are just enough wide but still deep so that's a <laughs> That's an important um, <coughs> lesson you brought up. So thank you once again. Yeah, the, I think the D model, Balaji, wide but deep where you want to be, you know. <laughs> correct. The so D, you, know, you want to be deep. And, and talking about certifications, you know, uh, Sachin, uh, I don't think Deming and Juran were black belts. I, I can't remember. I don't remember. Do you, do you remember that? I, I don't know. <laughs> So, um, anyway, yeah, Anshuman, just ba take it. Balaji, with your permission, I'll take some audience questions. Quite a oh, few of course, of course. I, mean, so, I think we should, yeah. yes. It's about time, yeah. So, Digjoy's question is a um, detailed one, but uh, let me summarize. I have a question for Sachin. Personally, like the domain of business excellence, how do you get into roles of any organization wherein we can make part, can take part in process engineering? What kind of skill set would you like to have other than of course, inquisitive into why the process is like this. I think so. Summary is, of course, you know, Digjoy wants to get into process engineering or bring process engineering to, uh, to quality and business excellence fields. Any advice for him? Uh, <clears throat> when I draw uh, learnings from my own experience, as I mentioned, that my interest was to serve my customers better. And uh, if you are seen to be uh, doing that, if you are believed to be working in the interest of customers, I'm sure your organization will provide you an opportunity to be a part of uh, uh, quality or process re-engineering uh, roles at your firm. Uh, 
Um, so I don't have any specific solution to offer to you, the joy, um, uh, except that, uh, you know, uh, remain close to your customers uh, and try to make, try to bring improvements and innovation in what your firm do or does for their customers. Uh, and that to me is a role which is uh, business process engineering or re-engineering. Um, if you do have a specific question, and pardon me if I did not get your question correctly, please uh, uh, repost your question. Uh, I would love to hear it more specifically and respond to it. Thanks, Sachin. I, th I think you did get, and uh, knowing the joy a little bit, um, this was what he expected. But but the joy, like like Sachin said, um, either repost or you can reach out to Sachin. Is quite active on LinkedIn. All of us are. So if you want to follow Sachin, you know please do follow um, and uh, he will surely take time for your answer. One thing I certainly know about him is that he's always eager to help and uh, be of service. So you will get your answer. The next one I'll pick, uh, Balaji, this is, um, you know, your kind of a question, but uh, we are asking Sachin uh, this question. So okay. <laughs> what, what, uh, question is from Murti. Uh, Murti, first of all, thank you very much. You seem to be new to the show. So please take time to follow the speakers and so that you can get alerts to more such shows and spread the word around. And firstly, thank you for your time. Uh, so the question is, what could be the key threatening? So from the SWOT, the T part, right? For all quality specialist professionals for the next five years. So what are the threats basically for the quality profession? I think very, very you know, pregnant with possibility kind of question. So over to you, Sachin. Yeah, I'll respond to this question in two parts. One is the philosophical response. Second is specific response. So the first part of my response is, let us stop looking at threats and weaknesses of this profession. And uh, to me, that itself is uh, the biggest threat, is that we self-doubt, we create a doubt on ourselves, our profession, uh, because of what's happening in the modern world. And remember that what's happening is beyond our control, whether it is a pandemic, or whether it is advent of technologies, or whether it is uh, you know, any other discipline which is uh, uh, shaping up. All of that is happening because of what's happening in the world. Uh, so one is to clearly remove the self-doubt which is associated with ourselves and our profession. And uh, a follow-up uh, point I'd like to make is what I mentioned on one of my webinar is like all webinars, like all professionals, and like all organizations, uh, there will be some which will be average, there will be some which will be good, and there will be some which is excellent. The same holds true for professionals. There will be average professionals, there will be good professionals, and there will be excellent professionals. Strive to become an excellent professional. If you are an average, you may get averaged out from the profession. <laughs> this is a challenging profession. This is a profession which requires continuous learning, uh, and uh, working hard behind the scene. Uh, uh, and you could be creating yourself a threat if you're not continuously improving and developing yourself. So that's my philosophical response. Uh, my specific response is to look at the strengths and opportunities of this profession. See, today, when we talk about digital technologies, this is not the first time the world is on digital revolution. It has happened early. 2000, it has happened, 1960s, 1970s, it always will happen. There's a reason that it's getting attention uh, these days or in the current decade more than it had in the previous decade. But while the technology guys uh, understand technology, and by the way, I started my career as a technology guy, uh, I can say this, while they know how to develop softwares and how, how to maintain softwares, we all know how to manage and how to understand customers better. And those of us who understand customers, customers' requirements, both said and unsaid, will know 10 times better than any technology guy who talks about modern technologies. So my suggestion will be to strengthen this strength of knowing and understanding the customers. And the opportunity is what I've learned from Anshuman. Anshuman in one of his webinars spoke about acting 
as a bridge between business and technology team. Why? Because we understand customers, we understand process. We know that a good process is prerequisite for a good automation, good technology intervention, and we can all do that. So that's the opportunity. So whether it is digital transformation, whether it is ESG, or for that fact, even strategy, or uh, any product innovation which is happening in your firm, the opportunity which remains in front of us is our understanding of the customers, our understanding of the processes, our understanding of the business. The threat, as I said, is self-doubt. Whether can I do it? If I get into this, what will happen to me? Will I lose out on my so-called quality tag? Uh, will I be considered uh, a non-quality profession if I jump into that? I think those doubts we have to remove from ourselves and uh, look at uh, look at the opportunities which come in front of us and really uh, jump onto them. So that's my two bit uh, two bit response to this question, Anshu. Very well said. Um... Yeah, I was going to say Tim, technology is a means to an end, not an end in itself, you know, and I think you brought that out well, because we keep having this discussion. What if Walter Schuhart were alive today? What would he do differently? I think one of the things you would be really amazed at as the at the way, rate at which data is being captured. But I think you'd be disgusted with the way it's being interpreted. So I think that that comes from the customer. You need to understand that and how to interpret data. It's, it's always a, a the the circumstances, the environment that you're collecting it. Yeah, right. Anjun, let's take some more. Sure. So, Sachin, we'll take one more question from audience and then move back to our list and then again maybe try and take more. Uh, so, before Balaji gets to his favorite future of quality question, I will uh, give you an easier one from the audience. See, I am nice to you, right? So, all the tough questions, this is always asking. <laughs> uh, um, this is a test for you. So Siv Raman didn't believe that you have actually read two good quality books. <laughs> so Siv Raman, with apologies to you, I will use you for some fun. Uh, so here is your question. You mentioned Sachin earlier that you don't read a lot, but you do read specific selective books. And that is a, you can say, hack life hack that you gave that don't read a lot, but read specific things. Which are the two that you have influenced you or you would like to recommend? I mean, two can be three, but up to you. Sure. So that, there I run the risk of uh, <laughs> not acknowledging the other books I've read. Uh, and on a lighter side, my my love for books is not so much because I. those of you know me personally, I really struggled in my graduation days. So, uh, you know, I, I became quite distant from books as I started working. But two books which have uh, left uh, the closest impact. The first book I was handed in 2004 uh, by a Tata veteran. This was about uh, journeys of Tatas. The book called The Creation of Wealth by R.M. Lala. And um, this was given to me uh, when I joined the firm in 2004, perhaps in early 2005. And for some reason, uh, I always had an emotional connect with the firm, the group, and group's work uh, in uh, you know creation of wealth. Uh, while I read through the various case studies uh, which are mentioned in the book, it always inspired uh, uh, inspired me to look beyond one stakeholder, which is investors and ROIs, and look to create wealth uh, for all stakeholders. The same holds true for uh, my own per professional and personal life, where I try to spend some part of my time working with other stakeholders, such as community building initiatives and other parts, uh, whether it is mentoring few students uh, or to contribute in the CSR uh, programs on my weekends. Um, this was the only question which I prepared. So without any paid promotion, I like to show you the book. This is creation of book, uh, creation of wealth by RM Lala, uh, and uh, this book was handed over to me. I still kept this book. This is the oldest book in my bookshelf, uh, which has, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, made me a professional who I am today. And the second book, uh, you know, again, not paid promotion and not that it uh, comes from a person who is who's hosting the show, who, who happened, who was supposed to be here. But the book which has left a deepest impact on me with regards to quality is this. Uh, this book is the simplest and the most impactful book I have read uh, to understand the subject of quality and excellence. And to tell you a small story, one of the, one of the days my son, who's perhaps more curious and learner, learned than I am, or I have been, was getting bored. He said, what should I do? And I have got tired of giving him uh, anything else like a video game or taking him, taking him out for a tour. So I said, why don't you read this book? And he read one of the stories, which happens to be about application of PDCA. And he made a one page note of how PDCA can be applied in his own business. And he gave me that note. And below, uh, believe you me or not, not that he's my son, I had goosebumps uh, reading his uh, <laughs> notes. It was much better than anything I have done in my whole life uh, about application of quality in a business. And uh, I just couldn't stop sharing that note with Mr. Lula. Mr. Lula went on to recognize him as the first junior qualitist of India. But that's, <laughs> that's really the impact uh, quality fables uh, by Suresh Ullah have had on me. And those of you who have not read it, my suggestion is this should be the first book uh, in your bookshelf. I think there have been few versions of it. So I've had uh, all three versions. So this is the second version of Quality Fables 2. And there have been another uh, Quality Fable, I believe. So all three uh, uh, have left, uh, you know, an influence on me. Sure. Thanks, Sachin. Uh, similar questions were there from, I think, uh, Rohit, uh, Amrit, um, and a few others. So thank you very much uh, for this question. I think, uh, like Sachin said, uh, the his, his selection of books is very, very intentional. And a quick word before we you know move to Balaji for his question. The Quality Fables book, of course, like Sachin said, three editions are out. They are all available on Amazon. Fourth one is in the works, so it should be out or available anytime soon uh, if it isn't already out. So you can, of course, uh, go and check. These are very uh, reasonably priced. The intention was not to price them at all. Uh, the intention is to share the stories and wonderful fables. And like Mr. Lula says that these are all stories. And some of these stories, you know, since I worked with Mr. Lula for so long, are I've been witness to some of those stories. So the fables are true life lessons that you can get uh, from a quality perspective. So thank you, Sachin, for bringing that up. Uh, uh, always a pleasure to, to learn more about these books. Balaji, over to you. And then we will again take a few more audience questions. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was nice that you brought up the fables thing. There's, I think I think the fourth is out, Anshuman. I don't know. It's red. Yeah. There's a red color. There's a blue color. There's a green there is, color. And there's a there yellow is. color. That's what there I remember. Is. You know, it, it so, first came out as a Kindle version. All... And now, yeah. It's yeah right. that's right so yeah always and i think every year Qualtech we used to have the award for the best fable which is you know really worth listening to they always make a lovely uh animation out of it beautiful animated stuff right uh so i was just i was just mentioning you know at that time that what if what if you hard were to you know make an appearance today and see things around and what would you say right so same way here uh you know how, how much has quality changed and we know that you know the world is changing at a, at a really fast pace. So, what do you think now is going to be the future of quality per se, or maybe as a profession? Uh, is it going to be just another strand, or you know, is it going to be the roots of any company, the basis for doing business? How how do you look at it? Yeah, Balaji, I think this question has been addressed multiple times on uh, the Qualities Show earlier. Uh, and I think the erstwhile speakers have given a very good advice on what the future of quality will hold. Uh, so I have no different views. And uh, uh, those of you, you know, my views are no different from what I've learned from 
uh, the speakers, specifically Anshuman, uh, about future of quality. So, I mean, I think the audience can simply Google on his YouTube channel and uh, go through his video on quality oh. <laughs> of project, quality of the uh, uh, future of the quality. But I, I, I do think the future of quality professional is going to change a bit. So while future of quality is a wide subject and there are always uh, already information available, the future of quality professional, I believe, is uh, going to change a bit. Uh, uh, I think quality uh, professionals will uh, either take wider responsibilities of quality, safety, and environment, or EHS, ESG, as in the modern uh, world it is referred. Uh, so either they will remain in operations and look after some of these things. Some of them have already and will graduate into technology roles. So quality plus technology or quality plus innovation. Um, and uh, there will be a few which will go upstream and uh, position quality as a strategy and most likely move into the profession of strategy, strategic planning, strategy management, program management office. Uh, there could be multiple names to what I'm trying to say is to go upstream and uh, uh, be a part of the business uh, or be part of the business decision making where they can influence decisions uh, uh, which will uh, which will bring uh, quality in the firm. And let me illustrate with an example. Uh, we all know uh, Dr. Juran's fitness for use uh, explanation or the model. And it has two sides as I broadly remember it. Uh, one which creates customer satisfaction and the other side which eliminates customer dissatisfaction. Most of us have been working on the other side, which is uh, quality cost less by removing inefficiencies, removing wastages, removing or reducing turnaround time, bringing efficiency, etc. Et but I can't forget there is the other side of uh, the explanation, which is product side, which is faster uh, time to market, developing product or service features. Uh, ahead of customers asking them, which is innovation, thus improving your revenues, thus improving uh, the uh, top line uh, uh, growth of your firm, and here quality costs more. So I believe that I do believe that some of us will graduate into roles where we will go upstream and influence decisions with regards to product development, profitability, top line growth. Uh, and we should be open to that challenge. It will be challenging because we are all we are always lost on this side of the game, and this side of the game is uh, slightly different. So I think quality of uh, future of quality professionals will be in uh, most likely three or four domains, uh, which I mentioned, at least for next uh, five to ten years. No, awesome, uh, Sachin, and and look. Your explanation or, or the window into the future of quality is far more intense and uh, deep meaning. What I do is usually talk about, uh, you mentioned several times, so I owe a clarification to the audience that I do a little bit around, you know, the quality of quality professional being challenged, which you also mentioned earlier briefly that if we can improve the quality of quality professionals in the profession or, you know, we are securing the future. So that's usually my uh, way of looking at it. But uh, thank you very much. Uh, we will. We are towards the end of the show, so I will take some session. Sayed Hassan, who's uh, usually a partner in crime with me on the other show that I do, Manage Better One. He's also <laughs> br brought in some, and he's an author himself with a book on India's first uh, rocket launch. Uh, in, extremely interesting book. Uh, thank you, Hassan, for joining us today. Uh, some in, other interesting questions uh, from one from Rajesh. Um, uh, not so much a question, but I think uh, without some basic uh, controls, organization start jump on excellent what um, what you jump say, start, your experience. Uh, yeah. So little little bit of SMS language, uh, Rajesh, but we will take it. Um, <laughs> so with some basic controls, organization start jumping on the jump start. I think you meant jump start. They jump start ah, okay. the excellence. 
any anything for you know yeah, I think that's how to jumpstart excellence journey you know how do how do this one uh, we are we are kind of understand trying to understand rajesh's uh, point but uh, I, i think we got it right that how do we jumpstart the journey anything on that uh, sachin while i look for another question there are quite a few um, yeah so if i get the questions is about uh, you know making a start on uh, yeah, on correct. on the excellence uh, to me as we know that you know the business excellence or excellence is about all stakeholders but uh, often i have found that uh, you know sometimes uh, you know our, our professionals uh, you know so go the focus on customers while they start to focus on other stakeholders as part of the excellence journey so my advice is very simple and pardon me i've been a stick in the mud <laughs> you know about this term customer mr lulla says that tattoo customer on your one hand and tattoo process on your other hand i'm a i'm a firm believer <laughs> we should tattoo customers on both our hands uh, and i i i firmly believe so because uh, I attended a session from uh, Vivek Talwar once, who spoke about strengthening the core uh, of the tree so that the branches and the uh, fruits and and you know etc. will be stronger. And I truly believe so. If the company is customer centric with customer centric products, services, and operations, it will take care of the core or the real reason it exists, which is to make profits, and then. it can also simultaneously focus on other stakeholders such as uh, society employees contractor etc i'm not saying that they're not to be taken care of right from beginning all i'm trying to say is don't let go of your focus on customer excellence and that to me is a jump start advice is sensitize your staff your senior management as much as possible about what your customer needs there should be a bulletin board there should be a white board which says what our customers expect of us while we we all know it but do we really remind ourselves on a daily basis these are the top 3 customer requirements and possibly unsaid customer requirements i think we should put a board uh, in front of us we should look at that board and then whatever we do during the day or week or month should be centered around uh, that so that's my jump start advice is to introduce a board <laughs> absolutely thrilling sachin uh, just trying to select as many as a, and rajesh you know uh, no need for apologies man uh, we were pulling your leg a little bit uh, with the sms thing so but thanks thanks for asking and we all learn oh, every day sent a message right okay <laughs> <laughs> no no I, i think i was a little i was a little rude on on air so apologies for that uh question from chitra and this might be the last question uh, sachin before we wrap up the show uh, as always start on time end on time is the first mantra of quality so question is of course glad to hear from you for the first time and i think chitra is probably attending your session for the first time uh, my question to you is how do you uh, quality professional how should quality professional deal with their daily setbacks and how to how do you deal with these daily challenges a uh, very interesting question so you know i'm sure you've never prepared for this so thank you chitra for uh, doing what we should have been doing in pushing sachin so there you go sachin sure uh, so i think uh, our own commitment to what we do is very important and not attachment and i'm copying these two words from uh, a forum which i attended uh, commitment versus attachment sometime when we are attached to so something we are emotionally attached and when it doesn't happen we give it away quickly but when we are committed to something and we face setbacks when we see something not happening as per the plan we remain committed and sometimes we take ourselves out of the equation and see listen uh, let me take myself out of the equation from what has happened bad and then look at what has happened and try to do something about it next day so remaining committed uh philosophically speaking remaining committed to the bigger purpose of the profession bigger goals as it is called uh will hopefully help us uh deal with the daily setback one of the other most powerful tool is to talk to somebody again the need of the mentor comes uh uh handy here if you have mentors who you can talk to and don't forget even mentors need mentees sometime so i have mentors 
uh, many many mentors I work with uh, and people I follow. I speak to them uh, uh, when I get setbacks, whether it's daily or occasionally, and I am able to get through this. So I hope that works for you as well. I'm sure it does. Um, thanks, Chitra, for the question. I think so. We have uh, Shailesh amongst us. Shailesh, as many of you know, uh, was a previous. Oh. Uh, you know, no star, uh, qualities, <laughs> qualities of the month and uh, pleasure to have you back on the show, Sachin, uh, uh, Shalesh as an audience. And he has a message for you, Sachin, so, um, which is always very delightful. Quite a few messages coming in for thank you. So I think and we are almost on time, just a minute to go. Uh, Balaji, any uh, closing remarks and then we will wrap up the show. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's as usual always been like a you know catharsis every time you interview someone you know you go through a whole cleansing process yourself and it's been amazing to listen to Sachin you know especially about his uh, uh, career I mean it's, it's so different right he's, he says he's not been an engineer and you know uh, from a technical background most of us we always associate quality with you know with engineering of course over the years as being, being being a professor I deal with people who are not from there now Sachin, I think embodies that that he's he's managed to get into fields where or he's been in fields where he's been able to implement quality and he always says this like that one one size does not fit all and I think that's one of the things we take away today learn to adapt and adopt right based on what you're faced with the other thing I think um, uh, I would I would uh, want to take away from here is about the mentoring uh, also you know there's the, the famous saying that we have over here in our scriptures and even in the Japanese, uh, they say when the teacher is ready, I mean, when the two student is ready, the teacher appears. But I think uh, the student should should take that effort to get ready, you know, and then uh, without just sitting back and waiting for things to happen does not does does, does not augur anywhere. It takes you nowhere. I think you need to focus on that. That's another thing that I think. Uh, and of course, this future and quality take where he says that uh, even the quality of the quality professional should should you know that learning should never go away these things never die all right and uh, these are of course besides the fact that he shared the you know the books that he read and it's difficult to keep it down to two books very very difficult we know you know that people read thousands and thousands of books and you can never tell which paragraph in which book had an effect on you but uh, in spite of that he managed to pick out and show us uh, which are the two books and i think definitely we we take some effort in um reaching out for that i mean getting those books and most importantly the quality fables thing i'm glad i know it's like a very pseudo marketing trip we went on but uh, i'm very sure suresa will be very happy with uh, with what we did so thanks a lot uh, sachin uh, this has been my learning i'm quite sure i don't know whether uh, i echo the sentiments of many of uh, the people here on the show but it has been a learning experience talking to you thank you very much Balaji, I will disagree with only one point. I don't think Mr. Lula will be very happy with this because we have <laughs> repeated his name so often in this session that uh, we can blame Sachin now. We yeah. can say that Sachin started it. I'm okay. So, let, let, let him. Yeah. <laughs> let, let him. Let him uh, put us in jail for that. <laughs> so, uh, with that, um, on that note, I I will um, thank Balaji and of course Sachin. Uh, fantastic show, Sachin. Uh, always a pleasure talking to you and in this format even more because we were listening and understanding and learning from your experiences. Thank you very much to the people who were on the show as audience and asked questions. Some questions we were not able to take live, so my apologies for that. And Sachin will take time uh, if they are on LinkedIn to uh, answer them. And of course, that also reminds me that Sachin, like I said earlier, is quite active on LinkedIn. Please do take time to follow him and uh, learn from his what he shares there, and which you can do for Balaji and me as well. Uh, and if you do want to attend such shows on a regular basis, do follow me. I normally post these alerts uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and if you joined on YouTube, do take time to subscribe. You will get access to alerts and uh, archives. With that. Um, I'll take leave. Uh, the, this is a monthly show, once a month, last Saturday. And since this is a month of 28 days, we will have the next session on 26th of March, uh, exactly four weeks from now. And uh, same time. So do look out for that alert. With that, thank you very much, everybody. 
Sachin, Balaji, and of course, Mr. Lula's uh, initiative as well. Thank you and Namaskar, everyone. Bye-bye.